up guys it's the real deal welcome back to the channel hope you guys are doing good damn uko he's so good i've had to build him twice he is one of my favorite champions good for so much content really good for hydra and live arena so we'll start with the hydra build first so i've got him in a reflex set and perception um, I feel like Reflex is definitely one of the best sets on him just because you have that 40% chance to reduce a random skill by one turn. Um, and ideally, we want that to be his A2. So attacks one enemies and each hit has a 100% chance to remove two random buffs, place block buffs and decrease accuracy for two turns. I mean, that is just huge. Um, yeah, so when fully which is 100% chance, just an absolute huge ability. And that's why we love him. That's why he's great. Um, yeah, so let's just talk about what other sets you could put him in. Um, speed, obviously, is a great set because you do want him to be fast. Um, Perception is also a really good gear set. So regeneration, if you don't have like a healer or you find he's dying a lot, you can definitely put him in a regeneration set as well. I would actually avoid Relentless on him um, just because of the Head of Wrath. All of his abilities are AoE hitters. And basically, if you hit the head of Wrath too many times, it's going to turn around and just smack your team, and we don't want to wipe. So that's one reason why I would not put him in that set. Uh, you could go with a Provoke set as well. Um, I'd rather just bring in a Provoker, but I know some people do put him in a Provoke set as well. And then the best, well, a really other good set, um, Impulse, one of the new sets. So plus 12% speed, so that's going to keep us fast. And that 30% chance to reduce a random skill by one turn is huge. So that is also another really good set that we can put him in. So let's look at the stats quickly. So I've got 57k HP, 2.8k defense. Would like that defense to be about 3.3 um, and 245, so nice and fast. And then 313 accuracy. Yeah, we've not... I've Definitely you could bump up those stats with glyphs, but we've not done that yet. I'm just going to go through all his gear quickly for you. So all we want is speed and accuracy substats. And then as our priority, then it's all about getting HP, defense, um, substats after that. But yeah, we've got HP on the gloves, accuracy on the chest, speed on the boots, HP on the ring, uh, defense on the amulet, and then HP on the banner as well. Could, could potentially swap that out for an accuracy banner if you were a little bit low. So abilities, his passive has a 50% chance to steal one random buff from a random enemy each time a buff is placed on the enemy team. Will only attempt to steal one buff for each type of buff placed. For example, cannot steal, you know, if there's three buffs, it can't steal all of them. But yeah, any stolen buffs become protected and protected buffs. So really really useful so like, you can still bust from the head of mischief and you know he'll spread them across the team as well really really powerful really really useful um and yeah so and he also has a revive all um at dead allies with 40 percent hp then puts block damage on them for one turn also places increase um speed buffs for all allies for two turns will also place increased speed buff if there are no dead allies um, so what I do is I actually turn this off for when you're doing Hydra. So that means you can do like, you know, like a full auto run. And if you do want to keep an eye on it, then you can revive the team. Otherwise, he'll just use this ability and he prioritizes it over the A2, which I think is really stupid. Um, personally, I wish they would change the, I, uh, the AI so that, you know, he only does this ability when allies are dead and revives. Otherwise, you know, it's just a complete waste. Um, and then he's got a huge A1. Um, A1 has a 75% chance of placing the big boy version of decrease attack for two turns. And this is really good for keeping the head of Raf's under wrap. But also it's good for all the other heads as well. Just because, you know, if you've got that decrease attack on them, it means that all the damage that they're doing is going to be reduced. So we sort of touched on um, his A2. I just want to come back to how strong this ability is. Block buffs is one of the strongest debuffs for Hydra, you know, it stops the head of um, mischief from stealing and spreading buffs. It stops the head of poison frying out all those poison cloud buffs. Um, and then also the head of wrath 
um, really important. It puts an increased attack buff on itself and you can block that. It's just such a good buff and it's so strong. Um, it is just absolutely amazing. So for blessings for Hydra, um, there's not really much of them that I feel that's really going to benefit you. I would pretty much, it's just about Brimstone. Because um, he's an AoE hitter, the chances are a land in that Brimstone are really high. And, you know, it does so much damage. So it's definitely one of the best, uh, well, no, I'm going to say it is the best, um, you know, blessing you can put on Uko. Um, but if you've already got two other champions with Brimstone on and you want to try something different, maybe Crushing Rend. Um, what else is there? What's the other one? Cruelty. So Cruelty as well can help increase damage. But, you know, if you really are... I would definitely say Brimstone would be your go-to. And, you know, then on the other, like if you've got like a Husk or something, like a hard-hitting, max enemy damage HP champion, then you're going to stick, you know, Crushing Rend on them instead. So, you know, it's, it's up to you, but I'm going to say Brimstone is the only way to go. So Masteries, um, we've gone down the Offense Tree, taking some Crit Rate some crit damage to increase our damage life drinker to keep us topped up with our hp if we are dropping below 50 percent hp and then it's all about damage hugging it all the way down to the left hand side down to war master defense we've taken a little bit of um extra defense uh, and then we've got to increase the amount of healing that we receive and shield buffs that this champion receives by five percent that's going to help keep us alive blast proof as well really good for hydra just because all of the, most of the heads are doing so much AOE damage that's going to reduce that by 5%. Uh, resurgence, so just a 50% chance to re re um, remove a random debuff from this champion when they lose 25% of their HP. Um, delay on death is just going to reduce the amount of damage that we take from the Hydra heads. Solidarity, so um, increases ally resistance for by 5% for each buff placed by them by this champion so it's not going to help loads but it does help a little bit um, and then we've got cycle revenge so basically when we take a big hit um, that's just going to increase our turn meter um, but yeah that can be really useful and then retribution as well so if we are taking hits as well we can get counter, counter attacks off and do a bit more damage to the hydra heads so let's move on to the um the live arena Uko that I use all the time. Um, he's a really good pick as well. He can be like a really good first pick because because he strips and he blocks buffs. People do like to ban him a lot, so he's good like a good first pick. And then you can sort of work around from that point. So for live arena, I'd say there's two ways to go. You could either go stone skin and have him still quite fast. You know that's going to protect him from being you know CC'd and anything like that. Um, but there's problems as well, because if they've got an Uko as well and their Uko is faster than you, then they are going to have a very good chance of stripping that stone skin and blocking, you know, putting block B buffs on you. And if they're one spilt like mine with stun set, then there's a good chance they're going to stun your Uko as well. So we've gone for speed and stun set. Let's just have a look at total stats first. So 44k HP and 2.5k defense. I'd like these stats to be a little bit higher but you want to prioritize your priority is speed and accuracy. So accuracy is um, 473. That does need to be actually a little bit higher. You want it to be around 600 plus, but I do, you know, I really wanted him to go first. And to be fair with this, like, you know, if you go against like a stone team comp, the chance are, you know, the, the biggest priority is to lock out their nukas. And if they're nukas, you know, nukas, the chances are they're not going to have very high resistance. So you are going to strip them, uh, put block debuffs on them, and they're going to be vulnerable because they're not going to have that stone skin protection. And there's a good chance they're going to get stunned as well. And then you can just go to town on them. So for gloves, we've got... Okay, so ideally these would be defense percentage or HP defensive gloves. But because there was speed and accuracy on them, they're such a good set. Substats, I was decided to just put them on over having that defensive um stats the ah oh, these um this chest it's a real shame i'd like you know it's only one roll of speed on there would like it to be more but you know that's the best the best gear that i've got on my account unfortunately for an accuracy speed chest 
Got speed on the boots with substats of accuracy. The ring could be rolled up as well. Let's do it now. It's not going to do anything massive for the account, but it does help a little bit. Um, and it's got terrible substats on it, but I've just got it just because it's reaction. It can help. So it is useful to have that. Um, the got really nice amulet with a triple roll of accuracy. And yeah, to be fair, I've not glyphed up everything. So there is a little bit of room for improvement to increase that accuracy as well. Then banner accuracy with a nice double roll of speed on it. Again, just to keep us nice and fast. So for live arena, um, I would definitely take polymorph. And with that nerf that's coming to polymorph, that's okay. Cause Uko still got loads of accuracy. He's going to land that polymorph anyway. It is definitely the best option for him. Um, I mean, there's definitely some alternatives you could go as well. Um, maybe temporal chains so that was going to slow down the other enemy team for each buff they have but you know polymorph is just so hard to deal with and it's really frustrating so it is still a very good option um yeah i would say it's polymorph is still going to be op it's still going to be broken on uko so i would definitely take that as first choice so i've not finished his masteries um but let's just go through this so on for mastery for this we've gone support so we've got taken a bit more accuracy, um, increase accuracy when this champion has no skill on cooldown. Increases accuracy by four for each enemy alive, so that's 16. Um, Arcane Cellar Tree, so um, whenever a debuff, uh, a debuff, a debuff um, by the champion expires, it's going to increase our turn meter by 10%. So that's going to keep us really fast again. Um, I did take Laura Seal just to you know help increase our speed a little bit. Um, either wire just to push back turn meter and then we've got master hexa so this is going to increase um the deep the block debuffs so that's what i would take it's going to increase that block debuff uh, which is just huge and also it can increase that decrease attack as well and decrease attack can be really strong and um, for example i've had it land on like maya liores and it just makes the damage that your nuka like a, an attack nuka is going to do it's just gonna treat like their damage just drops so much and it does make them pretty useless. So it can be a really strong ability that people do underestimate. So defense, um, resistance not gonna help us too much. We don't, we know I've not prioritized that, but this is a, a huge one. Improved parry, decrease the damage damage received by this champion by eight percent when this champion is hit by a critical hit. That is massive. Uh, Rejuvenation is not going to do too much to us, to be honest, but it's just so we could work our way into resurgence um, and then into delayed death. But yeah, cycle revenge is definitely a good one. So again, we'll be taking, you know, if this gives us a chance to cut in, if we do take a critical hit and increase our turn meter. So yeah, cycle revenge. And then we're taking retribution to get those counter attacks off to potentially get more stuns off and also that decrease attack. And because he's in a stun set, you have to take Fearsome Present. So that's going to increase the chance of placing a stun by 5% um, from Artifacts. So that's going to be huge. And yeah, definitely worth. And it also increases uh, the chance of landing stun uh, Sheep debuff as well. So that is going to be huge. So we've looked at um, we've looked at the builds. Let me just show you um, like a screenshot of Hydra for Uko. And then we'll look at some live arena with him as well. And we're back, guys. So Hydra Nightmare, um, 36.77 mil. Um, but yeah, so it's a very, very close one. Um, but, you know, I was sort of, it was full auto and I was like sort of not paying attention and I was sort of doing stuff. Um, you can see that little thing on the phone. That's my, uh, to the left, that's like my auto clicker. So, you know, um, I was just like, it was on my phone and stuff. But yeah, but yeah, you can see like Uko is doing so much for us. It's just, you know, this is like a really good team. It's all built around speed, but Uko is coming in clutch. That, like, again, that block debuffs is just doing so much for us. He's not the best for every um, Hydra, though. So if you get a rotation where um, it's Spirit Affinity, he's going to struggle. He, you know, he's going to die a lot, especially if the Head of Wrath has Spirit, um, and he's also not going to land decrease attack and that block debuffs as much as we'd like 
So that is going to cause problems, but otherwise he's still such a solid choice for Hydra. And now for my favorite bit, let's look at some live arena. So these are some old screenshots from live arena. Um, I was in the top 2000 at the time when I was uh, taking these screenshots, uh, but you can see that this is a really strong team we've come up against. Candrophon, Yuko, uh, Yumiko even, Leores and Pythion, and we just absolutely destroyed them. So Uko obviously came in first. He would have stripped the entire team and then locked them out as well with the stun set. Um, also, huge counter to Candrophon and Leores, both really annoying champions. And be able to put block debuffs on them, stops Candrophon from being able to put Perfect Veil on himself. And he gets loads of damage and protection from that from his passive. And then also we stop Leores from being unkillable. Um, and then Romantu obviously pairs up really nicely with Uko as well. They are a great combo. Um, so obviously if Uko doesn't get the strip, then Romantu, there's a good chance he's going to get to strip. And he's going to lock everyone's passives out, meaning that we can do more damage to the team and just drop them with no problems. Uh, then we've got another nasty, nasty team right here. Um, Duchess, Harima, Rotos, oh my Death Knight. I know you'd not want to run into this. Uh, this is a horrible, horrible team to come up against. But again, we managed to get the W and it's because of Uko and Romanto paying up really nicely to lock out, um, well, all of their passives. They've all got really strong passives and be able to like sort of put that down and shut down. But then also Uko being able to just lock people out with that stun, just really, really nasty stuff. And again, just destroying the enemy team. So this is the last screenshot and again, another uh, Yumiko, just literally I was coming up against this all the time. Um, but Taras and Usaga, both these champions, uh, just really, really difficult to deal with. And again, Uko coming in really strong to deal with that stone skin metal, stripping them all and then putting out that block debuff. Um, and Taras as well, he completely relies, you know, I mean, he hits really hard, he does a lot of damage, but he needs loads of buffs on him to be able to do, I think it's his A3 that does all that damage um, from buffs. And, you know, you just completely take that out of the equation. And then, you know, our Nukas, Hepfrek and Liores, they're coming in and they're finishing off the job. And, you know, like Nukas, they are really important, but your support champions do so much work for you. Don't forget about them. Don't forget to give them credit because they are doing a lot of the work for you. So, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, and actually... Also, you know, how are you guys building your Ukos? Have you built them differently to mine? And where are you using them? Because for me personally, I do feel like Arena and um, Hydra, that is the best spot for him. Obviously, maybe you're using him in dungeons or something else. I don't know. Am I missing something? Please let me know in the comments below. But thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll catch you in my next video. Peace.